In this video, we'll look at models for statistical simulation. This video will focus on models for random assignment. A few years ago, researchers wondered whether swimming with dolphins could be used as therapy for depression. Researchers recruited 30 adult participants with a clinical diagnosis of mild to moderate depression. These 30 participants went to an island off the coast of Honduras and engaged in one of two activities swimming, or swimming with dolphins. The participants were randomly assigned to one of the two groups. After the treatment, three of the participants in the swimming-only group showed signs of improvement, and ten of the participants in the dolphin group showed signs of improvement. So let's think about how to create a model for this scenario. Now, in inferential statistics, our goal is to make an inference about a population parameter based on the statistic in a sample. But this scenario is a little different. Instead of focusing on the overall population, we're going to focus here on the effects of a treatment. And we do this by simulating repeating the study many times. Pause the video and think about how this study is similar to and different from other scenarios you've encountered and how you might set up a model for the study. Previous studies involved randomly selecting participants from a population using a variety of sampling methods. But in this new scenario, the participants aren't necessarily randomly selected from the population. Instead, the researchers randomly assign the participants to experimental groups. So let's think about how to build a model for this. Instead of two populations, there is just a single population, all adults with depression, although it is split into two groups. In each group, we're interested in the percent of participants who showed improvement, and we'll combine these into a compound parameter by subtracting. And since this is a lot to write, we'll represent this parameter using symbols. In order to build our model, we need to make a hypothesis about the value of the parameter. It turns out that the only hypothesis we'll be easily able to model is that the difference is zero. In other words, the treatment has no effect. So what does this mean for our model? We can see that some people did see an improvement in their level of depression. So if the treatment has no effect, then that means those people were going to improve whether or not they swam with dolphins. And this will be a central idea as we build our model. We'll start with the idea that there are two types of people, some who would improve and some who wouldn't, whether or not they swam with dolphins. And out of the 30 participants, there were 13 people who would improve and 17 who wouldn't. And then we split the 30 people into two groups. 15 people swam with dolphins and 15 swam without dolphins. One key difference between this scenario and previous ones is that we are going to simulate randomly assigning the individuals to groups. We'll do this by sampling without replacement, and we'll set the sample size to 30 participants. Now, let's watch this process of repeated random assignment. The computer selects a person and then randomly assigns them to a group. Then it selects the second person and randomly assigns them to a group. We're assuming the treatment has no effect, so each person is either going to improve or not, regardless of which group they were randomly assigned to. And we can speed up this process. So now each participant has been randomly assigned to a group. And of the people assigned to the dolphin group, 40% improved, and 46.67% of the no dolphin group improved. And we could repeat this random assignment, which would produce different percentages. So we can, can repeat this. Here we'll do a total of 1,000 repetitions of this random assignment. And then we'll compute the difference in percentages for each of these 1,000 random assignments. Then we can look at a histogram of the distribution of these differences. In this histogram, each item represents one random assignment of the 30 participants 
to the two treatment groups. And what is particularly important is that this was assuming that the therapy has no impact on the participants' improvement. That is, the 13 participants who improved would have done so regardless of which group they got assigned to. Now, let's recap what we've done here. Our goal was to make an inference about a population parameter. To do this, we needed to specify a compound parameter. In this case, the difference between the percentage of each group that saw improvement in their level of depression. Then we created a model to reflect the idea that the treatment had no effect. Specifically, that out of the 30 participants, 13 of them would improve and 17 would not improve, regardless of which treatment they were assigned to. Then we simulated randomly assigning the people to the treatment groups. This overall method of making a hypothesis about the parameter and replicating the study is the same that we've seen in other scenarios. The primary difference here is our focus on random assignment to groups, rather than random selection from the population.